does your world look the same day after day? Because if you, like most people, are putting your past in your present day after day after day, and then you're wondering, how come my life keeps turning out the same way every day? Well, you can download the guide. It's a quick guide that I wrote for you called Step in a New Direction, because how are you going to live a different life unless you stop going back in the old steps and in the new ones? And that link will be in the show notes. And now it is time to turn off all distractions, tune in with all your senses as we welcome Dr. Karen Can back for another visit. She's everywhere and she's brilliant and she's entertaining. So just to give you a piece where you can pick and choose, and all these links will be in the show notes. And YouTube, you can find her on the LifeWave Microtraining, on Healthy Habits, Healthy Life, the Spiritual Medicine Digest. You can find her on Light Warrior Radio, which you can also find on Audible, Light Warrior Network, Light Medicine Community. And I just have to share this. Sensitivity is your superpower. I've written lots of books. I've written over a thousand articles and I've never seen anything like this. And well, you'll find out about the gifts she has. So if you identify yourself as a super sensitive person, you want to get this or you know somebody they will greatly appreciate the gift and the link for all of that will also be in the show notes. So Dr. Karen, welcome, welcome, welcome. And may I ask you to please share three interesting facts about you that very few people know. Hi, Ali. So great to be back on the show. Thank you for inviting me again. It's always a great honor to be with you and your beautiful energy and, uh, you know, it's funny with this question about what uh, people may not know about me. Um, I am so, like you said earlier, out there is like people pretty much know almost everything, <laughs> including when I need to buy underwear. I ask for a coupon code to come in my mail and boof, it happens. OK, so uh, I suppose that could be one thing. <laughs> well, I, I like to share that uh, uh, many people don't know, actually, that um, I'm a student of, of Kung Fu. Uh, so I've always loved Kung Fu since I was a, a child. Of course, I'm Chinese. So we watch a lot of, you know, Kung Fu movies where, you know, where, the, where what they're saying, it doesn't go with the audio, like tons of those. And um, my husband uh, is actually in love with Kung Fu as well. And he became a Kung Fu instructor. So I am his number one student. <laughs> so that may be something people don't know. The second thing is uh, he's also an African. Uh, he's actually American, but he's um, an African drummer. Uh, so he taught me how to do West African drumming, and uh, we also uh, met some dancers, so I learned to do some dance as well. So I'm actually a fairly proficient West African drummer. And uh, last but not least, although this is, I can't say people don't know about this, but um, I began figure skating at the age of almost 29 years old. We're talking like hanging onto the boards for dear life, couldn't stop. And it seemed like it was a shame because I was Canadian and all Canadians knew how to skate except this person. So my husband at the time encouraged me to learn figure skating and I wanted to quit after two weeks and he encouraged me to continue um, in, in, you know, very blunt words because he was very blunt. <laughs> he was like, just because you're a medical doctor, you don't have to be good at everything. Go ahead and quit if you want. But if I were you, I just, you paid the money. You might as well just finish out the 20 weeks. And I thought about it and I thought, I don't like it when he's right. <laughs> yeah, I did want to be a perfectionist and I wanted to quit, but I kept going and found some beautiful coaches who we're still friends with. Uh, you know, Jackson is 80s now, and uh, they really treated me as an equal, like I could do everything that the kids were doing. And I ended up in competitions, ended up winning, oh gosh, I've lost count, but at least 14 medals, including most of the gold in adult figure skating and ice dance pairs and singles and doing ice dance with my current husband uh, as well. Uh, we've done shows. We just recently did, did some um, Christmas shows. So, um, yeah, so that is that is our that those are the three things <laughs> to answer your question, Ali. Thank you for letting me say all that. It's, it's really, really neat. I also play West African drums. 
and we had the, the same set and I uh, played djembe, but I always wanted nice. to play, what are they called? The dunans. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite instrument that you like to play? Well, um, you know, James uh, plays a whole bunch of different things. He plays the Kren and the Balafon. We just make up stuff. So we're not really proficient at the Balafon, which is like a big, huge xylophone that's wooden. So um, Dunduns and Djembe, I like them both equally. Uh, the the Dunduns are these huge ones that uh, generally one person per size, but we often didn't have enough drummers. So we would play all three at once standing up. And uh, you're supposed to, to play them on their sides. So you'll actually have a bell that you're tinging with one hand and a stick with the other. And uh, that was really fun. Um, I like to challenge myself because my, just my personality, I would actually play left-handed and then I would switch. When, during practice, I would switch to my non-dominant hand and play the other way. And the other, the other drum students was like, how do you do that? <laughs> I'm like, it's good for your brain, right? <laughs> Yeah, so I was known to be able to pop back and forth and do either side, and I figured it was good for my brain, so I just learned how to do it both ways. That's cool. But after I had that first brain injury, I moved my mouse to be worked with my left yep. hand, for exactly right. what you said, so that and when somebody sits down at my computer, they go crazy. They can't. <laughs> it's like, that's interesting. Right. People get so used to what they're used to. And when I had frozen shoulder that I healed from, but uh, during the frozen shoulder, I couldn't mouse with that hand. So I just moused with the left hand and learned to be proficient at it. That's just like you did. You're talking a little early. I wanted to throw out when I was working on my doctorate, which I didn't get to finish because the, the injury took me out of the program. I remember I had a professor who used to sit in the front of the room and just read from the text. And I go crazy because at that time I was visual. Like I would know what words I saw, where on which page. And I used to go bananas and I thought, I wish I could be auditory. <laughs> and you gotta be careful what you wish for because after that injury, I was no longer visual and I'm very auditory which comes in handy because I listen to podcasts and audiobooks all the time and I can really get them, but you absolutely have to watch. And you don't even have to speak it because if it's in your thoughts, it's out there. Well, it must have been for your highest good. Otherwise, you wouldn't be who you are today. So, yes, sometimes we do need to be a little bit more specific what we need <laughs> or what we desire. Yeah. So... Um, we were uh, adding around a number of different, interesting, different kinds of subjects to talk about. And I wondered where you wanted to jump in today. Well, I thought, you know, one really, really fun thing, or at least I think it's fun, um, is to talk about supernatural stories. Um, I don't often get a chance to just casually chat about these things, because usually when I'm on an interview, we have a particular topic and a particular you know, honed in exercise, that kind of thing. So it's only in the company of just, you know, friends. And, you know, when I'm casually chatting to a group, do they get to hear these stories? Uh, most of these didn't even make it in my book <laughs> because there's so many of them. So I thought it'd be kind of fun maybe to talk. Uh, well, we can start with uh, the topic of ghost stories. So if you have some stories, maybe you can share. I'm happy to share uh, the variations of the ones that I have. I have a very good friend who has one who lives in her house. And when I visit her, her bedroom's downstairs and I'd stay upstairs. And I knew that's where the ghost was. And I had visited her once with one of my friends who saw her. And I, so I knew her name was Mary. And whenever I go to visit, I say, please, Mary, I don't want to see you because I just think I'll be scared. So I, I've never seen her. So I don't actually have one. But that same friend told me, she was out in the country in the mountains. She was walking down the road one day and there was a woman coming toward her. And for a moment, she looked away. And when she looked back, the woman was totally gone, totally out of sight. So I'm looking forward to hearing your stories. Well, I would love to be able to tell you that I see them. And for the most part, I don't. So here's the thing is that um, clairvoyance comes in two different forms. Clairvoyance comes in what I call outer seeing. So seeing as in like with your physical eyes. 
and inner vision. So my inner vision is much stronger than my outer vision. In fact, my outer vision, I, uh, I've had uh, surgery on my eye uh, from retinal detachments, laser surgery, and so I wear contact lenses and or glasses. Uh, and uh, so the outer vision, do I feel that it could be stronger? Yes. However, I do not take the time to train it because my inner vision is so strong, I don't bother, to be honest. <laughs> I don't bother. However, my husband's outer vision is actually quite natural. Um, so it's funny because I'm the one that, you know, does the muscle testing and the connection with source and asking, what is this? What is that? So I'll just give you some examples of how we've kind of interacted with each other. He being the outer vision, visual clairvoyant and me meaning the inner more clairsentient, meaning I feel stuff in the body. But there are other uh, spiritual senses that, that people have as well. Uh, like you talked about hearing, right? Auditory, the clairaudience, being able to hear things sometimes people can't actually hear um smell like being able to smell something that the average person can't smell because it's in another dimension ghosts for example can smell a certain way and then we can sense them and not know that that's what we're smelling uh claire gustus which is basically taste intuitive hits through taste and of course there's claire knowing which is what everybody would love to do is just know right just know don't they don't have to guess they just know so that one we all want to unlock but the funny thing is, is that there's really kind of funny stories about how people develop these kinds of things mm. or, or at least uh, at least to find out about them. So I'd love to tell you a story about when I was first learning about uh, entities. So entities, in this case, we're talking about low vibrational entities such as ghosts. Those are generally, you know, people that have not crossed over, if you will. Uh, they've died but uh, their spirit is still in our dimension and uh, it's not healthy for them to be in this dimension and it's not healthy for us humans to also have them hang around because they can get attached to us and suck energy from us not necessarily because they want to but that's just what happens even concerned you know um like a concerned parent who who dies uh unexpectedly may attach to their child because they want to take care of the child not knowing that them doing that actually makes the child ill so these negative entities I, I first heard about from Dr. Bradley Nelson, who is the author of the Emotion Code and the Body Code book and the systems, the Emotion Code and Body Code. Uh, and he had all sorts of interesting stories about entities and shared us with us how to simply, you know, release them or heal them. And uh, so I was so interested in that. I've always been interested in ghost stories and horror films and all since I was young, I don't know why, now I know why, uh, because I wasn't scared, you see. A lot of people are scared. Now, of course, if I saw one in front of me, maybe I would be scared. However, I am I'm really into the supernatural. I've always been, love those movies, love those TV shows, uh, the scarier the better. Um, so when he taught about that, I thought, oh, well, let me just check and see what's going on, right? So I got into, you know, doing muscle testing and checking, and I was really surprised at how many of my patients were affected by negative entities. Um, not even just ghosts, but sometimes what other people would call negative or evil spirits, things like that. Those are not formally embodied, you know, human beings. So they exist. But for me, it was more like curiosity. So one day, as I'm, you know, training this and learning this, and uh, not really knowing how to have healthy boundaries with my home. <laughs> um, one, there was one case where I um, had first been in the office and uh, this patient, you know, uh, was on the acupuncture table and I went back in afterwards. I said, how are you doing? She goes, oh, I'm doing just fine. I'm just wondering, do you have something wrong with your light? And I said, my light? And she said, yeah, it's been flickering. And I thought, it doesn't flicker, okay? <laughs> so I was like, oh, that's interesting. I said, hang on, hang on, let me let me check what's going on. So I got that it was a ghost and I said, okay, well, I don't want you to be scared. It's just, it is a ghost. And she immediately, oh, it's my dad. I said, oh, and I checked him and I said, oh, yep, it is your dad. And so, um, you know, we did a little exchange and uh, whatever she needed to know. And, and I said, okay, well, you know, we, we can release him into, into the light. And she goes, no, I'm not ready. <laughs> and I thought, oh boy. I said, well, it's not really healthy for them here and vice versa. She goes, I, I, I know, I know, I know. I, I'll, it'll be okay. I, I won't do it for long. I just want him. I just, I just miss him. And I just want him around for a little bit longer. I'm like, okay. So I thought this is a little odd. Normally we just heal the ghost and 
I said, okay, so we just made a mental note. Well, you know, not that long afterwards, I can't remember whether it was weeks or days, but it wasn't more than three weeks time. I'm in bed and I'm just reading and doing something else. And then the lights flicker. <laughs> and I was like, and my husband comes in, doo -dee doo. I'm like, wait, back then it was very serious. I was like, wait, there's a ghost here. And he's like, okay. And he just drops out, out of the, out of the room. Right. So I'm testing and I'm testing who is in there. And well, it, long story short, it was the dad. It was her dad. I said, Oh, I'll call her Jane. Um, that's not her real name. I said, Oh, so are you ready to cross over? He's like, yep. And I said, is Jane okay with that? And he said, yes. So we did cross him over. And I thought, well, this could get interesting. And this, <laughs> this could become a full-time job. But it wasn't like, I was like, eh, I'm in my pajamas, you know, in the bedroom. It's a little bit vulnerable feeling. And then uh, another case where I'm sitting at the dinner table with my husband. And I smell like this rank, like, like you know, kind of B.O. odor, right? And I look at my husband. I'm like, you stink. <laughs> and he's like... He's like literally going like this. And then I do that to him, right? And I'm like, it's not you. Okay, <laughs> who is it, right? And so it was actually a drunk guy. It was, an, it was a ghost, drunk guy coming for help. I said, okay, all right. Uh, yeah, we're in the middle of dinner, but sure, you know? So we heal him. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I kept getting these like instances where people would come to the house. There was a movie. I'm not even going to say the name because, because uh, just, I did clear the movie, but just in case there was a movie, I thought it was going to be some spiritual movie talking about entities because I couldn't really find anything that was like a training teaching kind of movie. And it wasn't that. So I had a whole bunch of friends over young people watch this movie and we were all feeling really tired after the movie. And so I was, I was asking God after, uh, why, why, what's going on? Why? I didn't know they were tired. I was tired. So I, I said, what's going on? And uh, God's like, well, there are entities outside your house. I'm like, what? Yeah. And it was like nine dark angels, like high level entities, right? Dark angels. And I'm like, okay, are they harming anybody? No. <laughs> so I was like, I don't get it. Why are there nine like dark angels? And it, it was because we were watching the movie. The movie was warning people about entities, but all the symbolism they were showing in the movie actually attracted the evil spirits to the movie. So the movie had the attachments of these uh, nine dark angels who apparently, you know, obviously were there so I could clear them. Um, and what the reason we were tired, Ali, was because our positive vibrational energy was being used to heal them. Oh. And then now when I figured that out, then I'm like, oh, well, there's a much faster, quicker, easier way to do it. Right. So we did that. They were gone. And so I called up my friends and I said, were you tired? And they were like, oh, my God, I was exhausted. <laughs> right? You know, and I'm like, I'm so sorry. There are entities attached to that movie. Now I know that's possible. So I apologize, you know, for the terrible movie that I had you guys watch. And, you know, everything's cleared and it's all good. But we learned along the way these little things. You know, like Claire Essence, you know, the, 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 the drunk smelly guy was a ghost, uh, you know, the, the tiredness, the clairsentience, again, that was, you know, clearing, clearing the entities, uh, that is a spiritual gift that people may have. And, uh, there can be anything. One time I did have a Claire audience. Uh, I don't have this very often, uh, you know, unless I, again, I'm not training it. So I'm in the car. We're coming from skating, my husband and I, the window's down because it's kind of hot out. And I see there's people, you know, on, in the house over here and we pass them. And I'm there's a car in front of us which a, with, with one of those personalized license plates. And so I'm kind of like, what does that say? And then I hear a voice from back here, blah, 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 right? And I turn and I'm looking at the people outdoors. They're not looking at me, they're not talking. I said, honey, did you? did you hear that? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> like, it's like somebody was answering me, but it can't be those people. They're really far away. So I'm like, okay, back to testing. So connect with source test. And it is literally a demon in the back seat. Now I can't see the demon. Of course it freaked my husband out. Poor thing. <laughs> it's a demon in the back seat. And so I'm like having this really, really, really fast conversation with the angels. Right. And then sort of like, okay, okay why, why is the demon in the back seat? 
I thought we had kind of a rule, like no demons in the car, right? And uh, so long story short, I asked the demon, okay, uh, why are you here? Well, the angel sent me. <laughs> I was like, the angel sent you. So I'm then asking the angels, why did you send this demon to my car, right? I'm like, you can clear them. Like, I don't have to do this, right? And they're like, you need to learn something. I'm like, oh, what is it I need to learn? So I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna treat the demon like they're a client, so what is it they need? And I found out that they had some sort of like, um, it was like a curse, oath, vow, curse thing, like something that that was multi-generational. I didn't even know they had kids, but you know, like a multi-generational uh, evil spirit thing that bound them on some level that they, they, they were being punished. Um, I don't know, it, it was just really awful, just really awful, awful stuff. And then I realized that the reason the angel told them to come to me was because I needed to learn to uh, love them. Because before that, I think I just thought they were bad, you know? They were bad, they are like evil, they're trying to hurt people sometimes. And that helped me because I realized not all demons <laughs> want to keep doing what they're doing. This one was actually asking for help. And so I think my heart kind of burst open that day and I was able to heal the demon and actually be able to love them and the ghosts and whatever. And, and realizing we're all just, if we really are one, you know, many of your audience, you know, has have heard that we are all one. So what does that mean? Well, that means I am the demon. I am God. I'm the, I am Hitler. I am everyone. And so are, so is everyone else. So if we're all just fractals of the same one, why would I literally demonize, you know, this other being who's low vibration, who I maybe do not like or do not resonate with? So that was huge. That was so huge. And so when there would be entities, you know, it's like meet them with love and uh, things, uh, things would heal faster. Uh, now, you know, I, I did was a little disturbed with, you know, people coming into my house day in and day, now, <laughs> day in and day out. Not that I could see them, but I could feel them and my husband could see them. You see, he could see lots of bits and he, he you know, wasn't the, the funnest thing for him. So a friend of mine gave me a hint that uh, to create a vortex around in through the home, which is now part of our healing, um, the Topican healing method. It's like a protocol that we have. We create a vortex that goes all the way down to the center of the earth, all the way up to the sky. Um, as long as we maintain our vibration and light, you know, day in, day out, it holds. And so if entities are attracted to the light, which sometimes they are, so they're attracted to the light, they hit the vortex and they heal. I don't have to deal with ghosts or demons, generally speaking, on a one-on-one -on -one basis any longer. So that's a lot of stories. <laughs> that's so interesting because all the people who I study and follow, they say you can't bring light to the darkness. The darkness has to come to the light, and that's what you experience. Well, you know, I mean, I may... Um, I'm open to all possibilities, right? Because if you think about it, um, the darkness, like if you you run, you know, go into a dark room, you can't actually turn on the dark in a light room, correct? Like it just, so once you turn on the light, the darkness, it disappears. You didn't kill the darkness, but it just disappears. So, um, so yeah, there's there's there are elements of the dark that that are so done with their lack of choice, with their um, you know what they vowed or what they thought they made oath to, and a lot of times the so-called evil spirits have been told a lie, and we know what that's like as a human being told lies. It doesn't feel very good, right? But they've been told lies. They've been told that the light will kill them, will annihilate them. They would cease to exist. And like most beings, um, they don't want to die, not knowing that they actually can't die. So they were told a, a, you know, a fallacy so that those that rule over them would manipulate them to do their bidding. 
So, you know, uh, so when they realize, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, you mean that's not real, that's not true, uh, then then they're more than happy oftentimes just because they're pretty tired too of doing the same old, same old. So there, there are, you know, legions of uh, low vibrational entities clearing and healing on our planet right now and more being on earth to to clear and heal and it's wonderful sometimes it feels a little messy in the meantime sometimes it looks chaotic in the world but it's a really really positive thing that that's happening around the world it's uh, interesting i i had a colleague who with whom i studied um in one of my main courses and she said one day she was in a class, which I don't know why I missed it. And they were working on somebody and all of a sudden an entity came up out of the body and walked through the room, like pushing people out of the way. So I know that person doesn't make up stories. So I've been aware of that for a long time. I personally only see angels. And I'm glad. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, that's great. Well, my my uh, um, my friend Michael, uh, he did see Archangel Michael one time. He was in deep meditation, and my friend Michael is shorter than I am, so I'm five four, so he's maybe five two, something like that. So a little guy, super super sweet uh, guy. So he's in you know this deep meditation. He opens his eyes and he sees this you know seven eight foot tall angel with a sword, and he re instantly recognizes Archangel Michael. You know, and then it, and then it just faded. But it was fascinating. His name is Michael. You know, <laughs> uh, he hasn't had that vision since. But that was pretty cool. And then my husband one time walked into the bedroom and felt a feather against him. Now the thing is, our angels really have feather wings. No, but you know, it's symbolism that they can communicate to us, right? Uh, so uh, I was. He goes, "What was that?" <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh, yeah, let me test, you know, so I tested and yeah, it was one of the archangels uh, that just wanted to make themselves known that they were there for us. So because half the time, sorry, guys, uh, half the time I don't pay attention to them at all, <laughs> except when I need something done. Right. But I suppose that isn't very nice, but I, they knew I do. They know I do really, really appreciate them. And uh, yeah, so I'll let you chat for a little bit, Ali, because I've been talking your ear off. I, I have ET stories too, in case you want any of those. <laughs> yeah, I, I lived in the country up on a ridge uh, in Idaho, and I had friends who regularly visited with ETs. And the wife said, "I think we should take Ali with us." And he said, "No, I don't think we should." So I didn't get to go. Aww. <laughs> Well, I have, a, I have a friend named Bob. His real name is Bob. And uh, we call him Conspiracy Bob because uh, years ago um, I met him at the skating rink and uh, he was so interesting. You know, we just became friends. He really loved figure skating. I loved it. He also would take really great photographs of my favorite skaters. And he would just gift these photos to me. So we got to be friends and he was telling me all sorts of political and all sorts of crazy conspiracy stuff, ETs and things like that. And I don't know whether to believe him or not, but he sounded so convincing, like he knew what he was talking about, right? And he'd drop all these names. I had no idea what these names were. Well, guess what? Since the pandemic, a lot of these names have come out. And I'm like, I know who he's talking about now, even movies, right? Like all the CIA files and MK Ultra and like all these things that he used to tell me about are actually true the funny thing with bob is he's always had this connection with et's and he could vector them in very easily uh the ships anyway so i said bob you're a star seed and he goes yeah probably <laughs> i'm like of course you are that's why you can vector these guys in really easily so the fight we had laughed though because he'd be like om shanti 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 om shanti shanti and he'd look in the sky right and he would see you know the the movement and om shanti and they would you know he's like you know um uh, what did he call it? Not flare up. I can't remember what he asked them to just to say hello, just to make the light brighter. And they would. Right. Uh, but in one occasion, I'm never with him during these occasions. But uh, one occasion he literally vectored in and it was like there, like this big, huge ship was in front of him and his friend. And I'm like, oh, man, I missed it. And he goes, yeah, well, we got scared. I'm like, seriously, why are you vectoring an ET UFOs if you get scared? 
like doesn't make sense it's sort of like those ghost hunter tv shows right where they're like they got the equipment and, and they're like checking for ghosts and like oh, oh some, i wonder if somebody's down here right and then they hear a sound and they're like ah! <laughs> and they're running away i'm like why are you running away you're looking for ghosts okay so just stay put <laughs> So yeah, so we'd laugh at at Bob and you know Bob would have a chuckle too, you know, and he hasn't done anything like that since. But I'm like, next time Bob, he goes, well, I think I'd like to get on a ship. Well, well then stop being scared, okay? Because it's not gonna happen if you get scared. <laughs> so so far, well, I did get invited to be on uh, on a ship once, but it, you know, it was all telepathic, so it's not like they they landed on my front yard. That would have been cool. Um, but yeah, it was before the pandemic and uh, um, it was like, uh, I can't remember which the name of the council now. Galactic Council, Federal, okay. anyway, I'll just say Galactic Council, but it may not be them. So they were like, we would like you to come, you know, and contribute. And I was like, are you talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, why do they want me, right? And so, and I'm like, so I have to leave my family and my dog. And so I was really attached to my earthly whatevers, you know, at the time. And then I was like, so do you have a skating rink on your ship? <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, they're trying to save the world and I want a skating rink on the ship. So I would go anyway. So I, I, I said, no, actually. Yeah, so I said no. Um, although I think there was a concession that yeah, James could come, but um, I just said no. You know, I just I, I don't know. I I just can't do it. It's not that I'm I'm like, why do you want me on the council? You know, like you know they want the human perspective, la 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 la, right? And I was like, I mean, that's a ton of humans that would love to do that, right? I'm just doing my thing. I'm just doing my thing. I'm in my office and the whole bit. Had no idea the pet, and, and then I was gonna be gone for a while, like 18 months, two years. Right? It, was, it was gonna be a while. So I was, I just, I just like, I, can't, I, I don't think I can do that. Like, I can't leave my family for two, like all these reasons, right? So I did not. And then the pandemic hit, and guess what? Haven't seen my family for over two years. <laughs> you know, like, I was like, okay. Well, I think they knew, but they couldn't tell me. Yeah, I think they probably knew what was coming. Uh, but they, you know, I had to make this decision, you know, without knowing the future, if you will. And uh, yeah, would I have changed my mind? Maybe <laughs> I might have changed my mind. Now I'm like, hey, yeah, you know what? You want to land a ship in my yard? I'm good with that. Yeah, I'm good with that. Where do we, where are we going? <laughs> where are we going? So uh, I'm fine with it now. But before I, I just I just couldn't let go of the earthly attachments that I had leaving my family and you know all this kind of stuff what the practicalities you know all that kind of stuff and uh I think probably half the population on the planet you know during the pandemic would have been like beat me up Scotty I don't want to be here no more right so yep yep <laughs> um we could go on for hours I have lots of stories too and I hear things and, and I get messages. So if I'm working on somebody, these words come out of my mouth and I tell the person that wasn't me speaking. It just came mm -hmm. through. Yes. Yeah. It's neat how we can connect and uh, sometimes just tell the person what they really need to need to know, you know, through their guide or through however we, you know, channel that positive information. Um, yeah, the, the extraterrestrials have been, uh, it's been interesting because I, I, you would think I would be very curious to know all the details, but sometimes I don't because uh, it's just, we're living this human life, you know, and that's part of our purpose is to live a human life. And even though on some soul level, I was a star person uh, previously, um, it's not like a daily thing I think about uh, or anything like that. Although there's certain people you see, like sometimes they're celebrities or you know, you see, and you're like, oh, they're whatever species. But, you know, I don't know a lot about the different species. Um, I only know what I need to know to help. So um, one time, um, James, because he's out, outward clairvoyant, he'll be like, there is something right there in our living room. I don't know what it is. I said, okay, well, since you don't want to test what it is, <laughs> I can test. But 
how does it feel? And he's like, it doesn't feel bad. I'm like, okay. And then I'll test. And I'm like, you're right. It is not an entity portal. It's not an entity. It's actually an extraterrestrial, you know. And uh, so then I'll have, you know, through muscle testing and source connecting us, um, I'll have a conversation. And this one time, they were actually consulting me. Again, I think the universe wants me to, like, learn something. And I was like, wait a second, wait, wait, wait a second. They're consulting little old me, little old human me. Like, why? I mean, these guys are really advanced. You know what I mean? Like, they know how to do this tele telepathic, multidimensional communication thing. So they were like, you know, well, we, 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 need, we need these microorganisms on our planet. Now, of course, they're not talking to like, because I'm muscle testing the whole thing and things popping into my mind. And so I test all these things. So um, they uh, were transporting microorganisms uh, that we had to their planet. It wasn't something that we were going to be at a lack for, but they weren't surviving you know, but they needed these microorganisms to make their planet work. And that makes sense to me. You know, we, we need microbiome, both for the planet and our gut and our bodies. So um, I figured out that one of the reasons was, is the dimensional travel, if you will, uh, from our dimension, if you will, of the micro uh, microbes, they couldn't survive that shift in dimension because mm. humans would get really sick too. You know, if there are dimensional portals near that they can get really sick because they're not used to it. They don't they don't know how to tolerate that. Their energy bodies are really dense. So the microorganisms were having that. So what we did was we created a healing. So to synchronize the microorganisms to their dimension so that they could survive in their dimension. And the funny thing is, is it's not that that's that hard to do, but they didn't think about it. Like it didn't dawn on them to 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 do that. So it was like, wow, I, I, I feel brilliant here. <laughs> I figured something out for the ETs. How cool is that? Right. So, uh, so that's kind of neat. People that, you know, put ETs on a pedestal or whatever, you know, it's like, we're all, we're all beings. We're all doing the best we can. Um, some things that humans do really well is imagine. And some extraterrestrials are just like, wow, you humans are so amazing. And we're like, really? We think you're amazing, right? So everyone's having this amazing party. <laughs> um, so just everyone listening here, you are amazing. And uh, yes, we are human. And sometimes we can be overly humble, but we're each of us are unique and amazing. And uh, can all of us can enjoy living together in harmony. Yes, thank you. That is definitely a message for the world. Um, before we go, would you please share the special gift that you have for everyone? Sure. Yes. Yeah. So I created a, a little quiz. It's called uh, the Sensitive Soul Type Quiz. So it's a little quiz where there's just a, a few number of questions and you answer it and it approximates what kind of soul you have or soul type that you have. Now, um, some sensitive souls are actually angels in earthly bodies. Some are actually star people, like they used to be, you know, an Arcturian or a Pleiadian, for example, in other lifetimes, and they're now in a human body. Um, some are what I call indigo or indigo crystal uh, souls that they're evolved human souls. They're usually here to buck the system <laughs> and, and to like sh shine a light on when things are not working, you know. Um, those are our typical indigo energies. And then we have uh, the other category called light being star seeds. They are those that are star people, but actually in their other lifetimes, they don't have a body. So they're just pure light. And when they volunteer to be here as humans on Earth, sometimes there can be little glitches in terms of their physical bodies functioning properly <laughs> uh, if they don't know who they are and they don't know how to ground all that amazing light in their body. So this quiz helps through those questions figure out which of those main, you know, sensitive soul types you are. And so far, so, so accurate. Like a lot of people have said, it's incredibly accurate. Some people already know what they are, but they'll answer the questions anyway, just to see what they get. And uh, it, it, you know, it's very, very, um, it's, well, I can't say for sure, unless you go to a healer, like one of my students or myself to test you, but it really is approximating uh, the soul type you are. And so it's really just for fun and 
it's kind of like a little game, but it can really help because some people read the description and go, oh my gosh, that is me. Thank you. Thank you. Now I know why I'm such and such, or now I know why I feel such and such. So it's really fun. And then, uh, and then we'd love for everyone to come to our light medicine community and, and uh, Ali has the, the link below the video. So you can certainly uh, join Ali and me there in the light medicine community as well. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This has been even more fun than I could have imagined. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Ali, for the opportunity. I want to thank everybody for joining us here today. And definitely check out all the links I'll be in the show note. Remember to join our Facebook group, make a friend, ask whatever questions you have. I put something in there every day, so you'll get some extra little tidbits. And you can listen to or watch any of our episodes. And this is actually episode 99, so I'm getting ready to make my first 100 show. And all of this will be in the show notes with all of the links. And I remind you to enjoy, that's capital I-N, capital J-O-Y, every moment, because nothing happens out there. And it all happens with Anne.